My name is Arlene Minkavich, and I work for Price Systems. My role at Price Systems is, I, is that I develop cost estimating models. My specific area of expertise is software cost estimating. So part of what's involved in building a cost model is understanding new software-related technologies in order to be able to identify what, what are some of the cost aspects of things like cloud computing and big data. So what I'm going to talk to you about you today, what I'm going to talk to you about today is some ongoing research that we're doing at Price Systems focused on cloud computing and big data and how cloud computing and big data relate to one another. I'm having trouble advancing the slide, Susan. Sorry. Okay, can you, um, you can, did you put your mouse on the slide and try the space bar or right above where it has the price logo, there should be um, a little bar that says like slide eight and then there's an arrow to the left and an arrow to the right. I got it. Okay, thank you. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Our, the way it did on our pretest didn't work, so I got a little flustered there. Sorry about that. Um, so what I'll talk about today, first I'll start with just an introduction as to why this topic is important and why I think people might be interested in it. Then I'll delve into a discussion of cloud computing. I'll define what cloud computing is, what the different kinds of cloud computing are out there, and how people are using cloud computing in different ways. Then I'll talk some about both the benefits and the risks. From there, we'll sort of segue into a conversation on big data. We'll talk about, you know, what is big data? How is big data being applied? How are people using it? And where is this matchup? Why why are cloud computing and big data related? And I'll give some examples of big data, and then I'll wrap up and hopefully take some questions. So cloud computing is not really a new idea. It's a paradigm that opens the door for utility computing. So in much the way that you get electricity from your power company, and you don't pay a set rate for electricity every month. You pay for what you use. In that same sort of a model, instead of organizations investing in hardware, software, and infrastructure to support their computing needs, they can access through the cloud these resources on an as-needed basis. Now, um, I said it's not a really new concept, and it isn't a, a really new concept, but it's still in its infancy with respect to maturity. So there's still a, a lot of hype around cloud computer. I like to think that the vendors have their heads a little further into the cloud than their technology is in many cases. You'll hear, you know, companies will slap the word cloud onto some capability that they deliver, and is it or is it not cloud computing? And, and it, at to some degree, mostly it is, but, but it's not maybe a complete comprehensive cloud solution. But it's definitely a notion that's gaining traction. According um, to Business Insider, they report that 84% of CIOs plan to cut application, have cut or plan to cut application costs through move, moving some or all of their technology resources into the cloud. Um, IDC predicts one in every $7 spent on packaged software, server, and storage offerings will be through the public cloud by 2015. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more later about what the public cloud is versus the private cloud. According to Gardner, 2016 will be the defining year for cloud as private clouds begin to give way to hybrid clouds. And we'll talk a little bit about hybrid clouds as well. And half of large, close to half of all large enterprises will have some sort of a hybrid cloud deployment by the end of 2017. So you can see here, Organizations are seriously looking into cloud computing, and that is because there are definitely potential benefits to moving all or some of an organization's computing resource needs into the cloud. So you're probably already a cloud consumer. Now, um, I focus here on things that are going to be familiar to everyone sort of kind of 
across industry. And But, you know, you probably have maybe a Facebook account or a Gmail account. Maybe you use Google Plus or Dropbox. Maybe you're, um, in, instead of having, um, a, excuse me, instead of having email through some Internet service, you may have a cloud-based email account. So when you use any of those applications, you are operating in the cloud. You're operating on a server that could be anywhere. Your information is being stored on servers that could be anywhere in the country or in the world. So um, what is cloud computing? Consumers of cloud computing, they get hardware, software, net or capability from third-party providers. So all you need to have is a smartphone or a tablet. It, you certainly could use a personal computer or, a, lap, or a, a desktop computer as well, but the minimum requirement for being able to access cloud capability is any device that has a, a browser-based access to the Internet or to the network that hosts the cloud. It can be defined... It, the Technical definition of a cloud is resources and applications that are available via the Internet uh, with the preponderance or with the fact that lots of organizations want to take, care, take advantage of cloud computing technology and are not ready to move all of their data and all of their processing into the cloud, into the public cloud on the Internet but there's a lot of people out there that use cloud technology and but do it either internal within their organization's firewall or do some hybrid of both internet and non internet usage. So we've kind of extended the definition to mean resources and applications <clears throat> excuse me, that are available on network devices that connect either to the network or to some network that has cloud enabled technology. So the National Institute of Standards and Technology According to them, the things that are being delivered by cloud computing include on-demand self-service. So if you need to access uh, processing power or storage on the cloud, you can do it when you need it from wherever. Ubiquitous network access, it doesn't matter where you are as long as you have a browser, as long as you have access to the Internet or access to the network that your cloud services are supported on. Location-independent resource pooling. What this means is the cloud providers are going to put together their servers, their server facilities, their data centers. They're going to put them in places where the real estate is the lowest price, where power is inexpensive. So it, where your data and processing are actually physically taking place is completely unknown to the end cloud user. Uh, and the reason that cloud computing providers will do this is because money that they save is money that they can pass on to their customers, the, the cloud service users. Um, rapid elasticity, one of, one of the big um, benefits of cloud computing is the fact that through virtualization, your access to the resources, the end users' access to the resources that re they require in the cloud can expand and contract as their requirements expand and contract. So, um, you know, an organization, a, a startup organization, for example, they're going to require some level of investment to get to the point where they have enough computing power to deliver whatever services or products they plan to deliver. An alternate would be for them to use cloud computing as much as possible for both their processing needs, their storage needs, um, their infrastructure needs, to use that as much as possible so that they can start small when the business is small. And as the business grows, they can take advantage of this 